I do not trust the United States Postal Service, and you should not either. I am not here to disparage anyone, but I am here to tell you why I do not trust the United States Postal Service. Again, I am not here to disparage anyone. I promise you that, and I am not here to be overtly political. I promise you that as well. But I am in... Uh, look, I am here because every once in a while... The universe melds and conforms in front of you and puts you on a pedestal in front of the one argument that you perhaps were born to make. That you, in all of your experience, and only you can make, only you have the ability to put forth this argument in the reasons that you should not trust the Postal Service. I am that guy today. Here, on a random Tuesday, at the end of September, on an election year, mind you, I have just retrieved my mail. Here it is. Here's the mail that was in my mailbox. And... Oh, no. Here. Here is the letter from my mailbox that is addressed to me leaving six pieces of mail, six out of seven pieces of mail that are two different people. Here are two pieces of mail from the same place to different individuals, neither of which are me, in my mailbox. There is a total of four non-Adrians in one Adrian's mailbox. Um, now, there is a bit of an extenuating circumstance here. Uh, you're just going to have to take my word for it. I'm not showing you other people's names and addresses. I'm not even going to show you mine. But if you go over to Strip Cover Lit, which is the book channel that I run on YouTube, and you can go back four years, back to 2016, probably even the end of 2015, I was complaining about this, that I get other people's mail at my apartment. Now, like I said, a bit of an extenuating circumstance. The fact is, my apartment number is 209. The building address is 209. That said, every address to which any of these mail people have ever delivered mail has a building number and a, a, an apartment address. For some reason, when they get to my mailbox, they forget to look for both of those numbers. They forget to look for both of those numbers, and they just put it willy-nilly in my mailbox. One time, I, I work overnights. I was doing overtime. I happened to come home and stumble upon the mailman. And I said, hey, I don't know if you knew this. I get everyone's goddamned mail. And he laughed. He said, hey, sometimes on weekends, uh, we have part-timers doing this. We got guys just running through, not, not guys who normally do your mail, I'm sorry. Here's the problem. And then he told me, hey, just put it in the outgoing mailbox. Here's the problem. A, it's not always on the weekends that this happens. It's not always just Saturdays that I get someone else's mail. Here it is Tuesday. Other people's mail in my mailbox. Further, I have re received at least one piece of mail in my day. In fact, one time, other people's mail was stacked up so high in my mailbox, and I went maybe a week without checking it, maybe a couple weeks without checking it. After all, all I ever get is the spectrum bill that I, or the, uh, the electric bill that I'm supposed to pay, and you know, I really needed to pay that two months ago. It got so bad in my mailbox with other people's mail they locked my mailbox, changed the lock, and rounded up the mail and took it down to the depot. So I had to walk my merry ass to the mail depot because of the mail people's mistake, get my mail lock changed, get the new keys for it, pick up a brick of mail where I sat in front of the guy and sort it out. Okay, here's the four letters that are for me. You need to figure out where the rest of this goes. That was infuriating. And here's 
an argument that I see tossed around so often with this debate because it's become politicized. Why has it become politicized? Because something came out of Donald Trump's mouth. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what. The media has to immediately start, is triggered, and immediately has to start pumping the other side of an argument. And people for some reason say, hey, don't you trust the police? And the police make mistakes. Don't you trust the firefighters? And the firefighters, they make mistakes too. There's a lot to, to unpack there. Here's the first thing. There are a total of zero five-year-olds in this country right now dreaming of being the mailman. Why is that relevant? Because no one's dream job was to be the mail guy. Nobody's. I'm not disparaging anyone. I'm just saying that's a true fact. I guarantee it. If you know a five-year-old that is looking forward to being the mailman when they grow up, just go ahead and leave me a nasty comment in the comment section below. I will know you are lying. Second, I looked this up before I filmed this out of curiosity. And as of 2018, there were 275,000 volunteer firefighters in the country. Why is that relevant? Because firefighters care so much about that, that duty and that expectation and what would happen if there were no firefighters that they are willing to be, be volunteers on a firefighter force and risk their lives to do so. How many volunteer male people are there in the country? I bet it's the same number as there are five-year-olds dreaming of being mail carriers. Now, yes, police do make mistakes. And often when a policeman or a policewoman makes a mistake, it has a deadly and ca catastrophic outcome. Which is sad. And I think everyone can agree that there is some level of police reform that needs to be done. But I ask you this. Here are these letters, once again. How many of these letters was delivered at knife point? How many were delivered under gunfire? How many were delivered after a taser was deployed and failed? Now, there might have been some crackheads around when these letters were delivered, so the United States Postal Service probably passes that test. Um, but here's the point I'm actually making. Here's the overarching point. Do you trust the USPS? Essentially, as far as you trust the guy at the five and dime. It's a job. Uh, the United States Postal Service is a job, not a career, not a craft, not a vocation, not a labor of love, it is a job, which is fine. Look, I work retail, I have worked retail since 2003. I work with people right now who take their job very seriously and do not screw up, but they are fallible. People are fallible. I also work with a whole lot of people. If I work with, if I work with five people who take their job very seriously, I work with 15 who seriously do not. Um, and like I say, I've worked retail since 2003, and maybe this is me being an old fuddy-duddy. Maybe this is uh, me being a NIMBY or a get-off-my-lawn kind of guy. But the number of individuals that I work with that do take their job seriously, seriously seems to be dwindling ever further with every new cinematic universe that rises and fizzles, with every gaming system that pops with every new phone feature that allows you to be further and further from where you actually are. Um, look, there are undoubtedly individuals at the post office that treat their job with the utmost of care. And I can promise you, there are those who do not. But Adrian, you're being racist. Adrian, you're just touting uh, Republican talking points. Adrian, this is ridiculous. We can trust the USPS with an entire election. Look, 
here's, here's the essential argument with that. What you're talking about, here's the essential argument against what I'm giving you, is that what you're talking about is a Donald Trump talking point, and Donald Trump wants to disenfranchise, disenfranchise black people. Donald Trump is a racist. I don't care if you think Donald Trump is a racist. Let me tell you this. The United States is about 12%. The, the population of the United States is about 12% black. The population of Kansas City, Missouri, the city in which I live, is about 30% black. And you thought the Midwest was all stay puff. The population of the building in which I live, from maybe I'm wrong, but by observation, the people that I have met, is about 50% black. This problem is not happening in the white part of town. I guarantee it. What we're talking about is not just a problem of race. It is a socioeconomic problem as well. Disproportionately a black problem, as disproportionately um, this problem becomes socioeconomic. That is, uh, that is the problem. This is, this is going to affect predominantly minority and lower income individuals. That's the building in which I live. People whose addresses are easy to confuse because they live in close proximity. Now, where I live currently is an egregious example of this, but I have lived in apartments since 2005. I've always had a little bit of this problem. The Donald Trump is an elitist and a racist and a bigot. This argument, if you want to make that argument, make that argument. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. That argument and the we should be letting the United States Postal Service handle an entire election, those arguments contradict each other. Those arguments contradict each other. It is largely people who the perception is that Donald Trump is disenfranchising. Those are the people that are going to suffer the most from an election run by the United States Postal Service. That's all I got.